Welcome to Life Happens, where Texans come to protect their legacy and prepare for the second half of life. Join your host, Attorney Kim Hegwood with Hegwood Law Group and our weekly guest as we navigate the challenges that emerge as life happens. Now here's your host, Kim Hegwood. Good morning. Welcome to Life Happens with me, Kim Hegwood, and our very special guest today is Dr. Aaron Blight. Good morning. Good morning, Kim. Thank you for having me today. And uh, so it's it's a pleasure. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you have some interesting things that I think our listeners are going to enjoy. So we want to kind of uh, kind of get going. I noticed that the name of your company is called Caregiving Kinetics. Um, that seems like an interesting name. Uh, how did how does how did that come about? Just real fast. I was just curious. I'm so glad that you asked me that question, Kim. Um, you know, kinetic energy is something that exists in the physical sciences. It has to do with bodies in motion and, and the transfer of energy. And I think that there are some real lessons that we can take from kinetics and apply to caregiving, uh, the transfer of energy between caregiver and care receiver. And so I just think it was a really cool name and it sounds really cool when you roll it off of your tongue, so. And uh, so, all right, well, I'm going to be, this will be really fun for me because I've already been a caregiver. I tell most people I've already done that. Um, and I anticipate having to do it again. So I did it with my grandparents and I anticipate when, when, you know, comes time for mom, then, you know, we'll all be, my sisters and I will all be taking care of mom. And so, but you did something interesting. Um, you wrote a book, always good. And um, in the title of your book, I believe is When Caregiving Calls. Uh, the guidance says you care for a parent, spouse, or aging relative. That's right. And so um, how do you think that your book um, helps caregivers? Well, the book is very concise. It's easy to read. It's relatable, I think, for most family caregivers. It was written based on my experience in home care. I worked with thousands of families who were caring for aging parents and relatives. I also was a family caregiver myself for five and a half years. And I've studied caregiving as a phenomenon of social science. You, you mentioned I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor of learning. I'm not a medical doctor, but I've studied caregiving as a transformative learning experience. And caregiving really does transform your life in many ways. And so um, based on all of that experience, I, I wrote when caregiving calls, guidance as you care for a parent, spouse, or aging relative to try to help the everyday caregiver uh, understand and process their experience a little bit better. You know, in, in caregiving, there's so much focus on the to-do list, on the tasks of caregiving that you can easily feel like, you know, there, you can never keep up and, and you can lose sight of yourself and may not even think about what's happening to you and your relationship. And so the book really explores some of those aspects of caregiving, the, the social dynamics of caregiving, the way that caregiving can shape your perception of your life and, and your reality and your understanding of some profound uh, meaning of what it means to be human. And so after um, each of the 18 chapters, there are questions for reflection in the book. And the questions for reflection are designed to cause the caregiver to, to think about what they just read and apply it to their individual situation. One of the early readers of When Caregiving Calls uh, said to me, she said, well, I liked the questions for reflection, but I didn't like the questions for reflection. And I asked her what she meant. And she said, well, I guess there were just some things that I did not want to think about. Yeah. But then she goes, but I know and I knew that I had to think about them. So they were good. And, and she really summed up the value of those uh, those questions for reflection in the book. Um, and so if the, the caregiver reads the chapters and engages in those reflective questions and, and actually writes their answers, it can be a transformative learning experience for them. I think for me, it was trying to keep the dynamic of just granddaughter without really calling into play, you know, caregiver, um, really much more of a, 
I'm just here to help kind of thing. Just I'm here to just to direct, you know, and everything else is good. And, you know, what can I do for you? You know, kind of things. And so it's um, it was a huge learning experience, um, uh, time consuming, um, exhausting, you know, don't get me wrong. I would never change anything, you know, but it was definitely definitely uh, an experience you know in that regards and so and so for other caregivers that are that are listening to us today and so what's the most important advice piece of advice that you would give them um, well um i think that one of the most important things for family caregivers to appreciate and understand is that you can't necessarily do this alone and that it's okay to ask for help. A lot of times family caregivers feel like it's a, a betrayal of their loved one to, to go out and ask for help or that somehow they're less, um, you know, they're, they're less worthy as a family member because they need help. And there really are two different types of help, two general categories of help that family caregivers can and really should consider. The first is help with the tasks of caregiving for their loved one, because as your loved one's needs for care increase and grow, it can become a very intensive uh, process to provide those supports to your loved one, uh, so much that one person just can't do it all by themselves. And so by outsourcing or, or getting some help in, in those tasks of caregiving, you're going to give yourself a break and you're going to be able to to do a better job when you are engaged in caregiving. The second type of help that I would encourage caregivers to consider is help for themselves, for their own needs, because caregiving can have a significant effect on your physical health, on your mental health. Um, caregivers have quadruple the rates of clinical depression compared to the average population. They experience anxiety and stress and so um, recognizing that your own needs are, are there, and even though your, your family member has obvious health conditions and, and needs that, that you're taking care of, you also should seek out the help that you need, whether that's uh, seeing your doctor or perhaps seeing a counselor or a, uh, a caregiver support group can also be a way of, of helping you to, to fill your tank. I feel like sometimes uh, uh, one of the things that I, I do in my in my practice is um, is really kind of pound on caregivers. You got to take care of yourself. You have to sleep. You you have to you know your priority is taking care of you first, so that you're able to take care of someone else. You know, and I always use my grandfather as an excuse uh, in telling the story because. You know, he was the guy that stopped working to take care of my grandmother. And he, I said, well, do you need help? Do you need anything? He goes, oh, no, no, I'm the husband. It's my job to take care of her. I said, well, I understand that. But still, that's, you know, it's a big job, you know. So tell me what, you know, what we can do. No, no, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Um, and so it was probably a couple of weeks in and I was, you know, over at the house. And I said, and I'm looking around and I'm thinking, what are you feeding her? You know, and um, and so because I'd never seen the man cook. <laughs> so, I mean, my grandmother did, you know, she was a traditional housewife. I never saw her, you know, I never saw him cook. He grilled, never saw him cook. He said, well, you know, eggs and, you know, I've started up the grill and and I said, oh, OK, uh, we're going to do some different things at the grocery store. <laughs> And uh, changed up, you know, things that, you know, that were easy for him to stick in the microwave and things like that, you know. And so, but he also had a stroke taking care of her because he wasn't taking care of himself. And uh, and I tell that story a lot because I think it's impactful and I think it's very realistic. And, and for a lot of people, it's very shocking um, to think something, you know, that drastic, but it really tells a story about how much he wasn't taking care of himself. That's you know, right. And, and I tell clients all the time, you know, this is important because you could be my grandfather if you don't do these, you know, sort these things. And so, 
And uh, so I can appreciate, you know, all the wisdom that you've, you know, given our listeners to so far. And so um, let's talk about something and let's change a little gears a little bit. Let's okay. let's talk about, um, uh, I, I want to hear from you and then I'm going to tell you what I learned. Uh, what about some unexpected rewards that come from caregiving? Well, this is a topic that I love to discuss, Kim, uh, and it's actually a chapter in When Caregiving Calls. There's so much in the research about caregiving that's related to the burden and the strain and the, uh, the, the negative effects of caregiving. There's very little research on the rewards that are associated with caregiving. And I, I find that shocking in the research. It seems that we should be focusing on that a little bit more. And when I talk about caregiving, I always try to um, ask caregivers, well, what do you find rewarding about this, this role? And their answers are profound. All caregivers report some sig sig significant rewards associated with the caregiving role. I've heard caregivers talk about finding a greater sense of meaning and purpose in their life because of what they're doing as a caregiver. Caregivers report enhanced relationships with their loved ones, um, taking care of unfinished business before their loved one passes away, gaining a, ga uh, gaining a greater appreciation and perspective about life and living. You know, if you're around someone who is dying, you can learn a lot about uh, about dying and also about living. So um, also just knowing as a family caregiver that you are doing everything that you can for your loved one. As you said uh, earlier, Kim, you would do it all over again. You know, you don't regret anything, yep. even, though, even though that was very hard for you, you would do it again. And, and most family caregivers would say the same thing. Yes, it's hard, but it's worth it, uh, knowing that their loved one has received the best possible care that they can give. So um, the rewards are, are profound. In my case, personally, caregiving entered my life at a relatively young age. I was 29, and my mother-in-law got a brain tumor diagnosis unexpectedly. We were, we became, my wife and I became the sandwich generation. Uh, we had young children and we took care of her mother for five and a half years. And ultimately that caused me to change the course of my career. And uh, ever since I've really been devoted to the cause of caregiving and, and helping caregivers and families. Uh, and so I find great rewards and satisfaction in, in, this, in this area. With my grandfather, um, while I loved my grandfather immensely. Uh, my grandmother and I were very close. Um, and I don't think it's, I don't think my grandfather and I were as close, but when she passed, it was just him. We got to be very close. Um, I learned lots of stories, lots of things about him that I didn't know. We got a lot more time to talk, um, you know, so it was really interesting and, you know, in really getting that information, you know, so, um, and really getting to spend a lot more, you know, just one-on-one -on -one time with him. Because usually if I was at the house, it was with my grandmother. You know, she was the one that, you know, wanted to spend time and he'd be out in the yard, you know, mowing or doing whatever, you know, piddling and, um, and things like that. And so, and so here's our dilemma. Uh, this is fabulous. And, um, but I want to know if I can cut you short today and bring you back for the second half because you've got a lot of good information. Okay. And, uh, and so I'd really like to make sure that we can spend the time for our listeners to have this. So real quick, just real fast, tell them how they can find you. So my website is caregivingkinetics.com and, and kinetics is spelled K-I-N-E-T-I-C-S. And there's my email on the screen, Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, at caregivingkinetics.com. So what I'd like to do is, uh, if you don't mind, is I can bring you back and let's talk about the rest of the stuff that we wanted to talk about that we didn't get to today. So I hope you'll do that. That sounds wonderful, Kim. Thank you. All right. I appreciate it. You have a good rest of your day. You too. 
Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Life Happens with Kim Hegwood. Be sure to tune in every Thursday at 10 a.m. wherever you listen to your podcast as we navigate through the challenges that emerge as life happens. The content of this podcast does not establish an attorney-client relationship or constitute attorney-client privilege, legal, medical, financial, or any other professional advice.